Welcome to the Tile Confidential Podcast. My name is Saul, an author, tile installer, and owner of Bella Tile Store. I want to help you learn about tile to make choosing tile for your next home improvement project easy. You're about to embark on a journey into the world of tiles and learn from myself and other leading experts in the industry, such as manufacturers, designers, retailers, architects, and much more. If I can help you feel confident when it comes to tile, then I've done my job. So without further ado, let's get into our episode. Design is a formal response to a strategic question. Mariana Lopez. Hi, and welcome again to another episode of uh, the Tile Confidential Podcast. In this episode, we are going to talk about a very common question that I get at my store, uh, which is, what's the difference between ceramic and porcelain tiles? I think this is a, a subject that uh, is not really well understood and um, people are not really sure uh, the exact reason why we may use ceramic tiles versus porcelain tiles in certain situations. As I've done uh, my research in, in different uh, stores, going to different stores and showrooms and stuff, I tend to see the common answer to, for that question to be, well, ceramic tiles are for walls, porcelain tiles are for floors and walls. And I think this is just scratching the surface as far as an answer to a question of, should I be using ceramic or porcelain tiles? One of the most confusions people have about tiles is the actual difference between these two products. And they're substantially different from each other because they're manufactured differently. And they're also uh, the ingredients that goes into making them are also different. And as a result, their usage is also quite different as well. You see it's not only on the functional aspect of its usage, but also in the design aspects as well. So when you're trying to decide between ceramic or porcelain tiles, one of the things you need to consider is where it's being installed. And no, I'm not just saying, you know, whether it's going to be on a floor or a wall, but more to with regards to things like, um, is it going to be outside or inside? Um, is this, is the location going to be prone to more, um, abrasion, um, or maybe it's a surface that is a feature wall that maybe will never get any resistance or scratches on it. Um, is it going to be exposed to moisture or water? Like if it's in the shower area and, and these are the kind of things that we need to really consider because one of the important things, distinctions between these two products is their durability. Um, porcelain is, uh, well, let's start with ceramic first. Ceramic tiles, the main ingredient in them is clay. And so they're basically made from silica and clay and a few other things, but that's the majority of their ingredients. Porcelain, on the other hand, is made from clay, feldspar, and a whole array of other types of minerals. It can be quartz, it can be marble, it can be um, recycled materials like glass. Um, its, its formulation can be quite different. And as a result, it's going to have specific colors, it's going to be much more dense, and it's also uh, manufactured at, a, at different temperatures. So, you know, uh, ceramic tiles tend to be um, cooked in a kiln in a much lower temperature than uh, porcelain tiles do. Um, and this is called the sintering temperature, in which 
all the these minerals fuse with each other at a certain temperature and, and as a result they uh, bond and create this kind of like strength that the tile experiences but nonetheless um, for as far as our purpose is concerned uh, you know durability of these two tiles are quite different so um, ceramic tiles are not very durable outdoors um, they are more prone to water absorption um, and because of their the ingredients that they, they made from they're much softer so they're not going to be very good for abrasion so you might be thinking well as if that's the case then you know why would you ever want to use ceramic tiles you know you would think that if porcelain tiles can be used for walls and floors and durable it seems like that's the obvious choice well each product has its own limitation and this is where we get into the design aspect of it is that ceramic tiles if you ever seen a subway tile with a kind of a wavy pattern on it um or ceramic tiles with a specific shape that you know maybe uh you might not like 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 for instance like water drops or um you know like a very thin uh border pieces or um uh, you know lantern kind of a look they're they're they tend to be made out of ceramic tiles. They're, they tend to be ceramic based. Um, sometimes they may be single fired ceramic tiles, which they're also called monocouture tiles. But nonetheless, they're still ceramic tiles. Um, and this is this is where you kind of you get this kind of very distinct design on these tiles, porcelain you don't see very much shaped like that and especially on its surface they're manufactured differently so porcelain tiles tend to be more used in larger tiles especially nowadays with you know tiles um getting bigger and you know even thin porcelain panels that are that are getting more more popular um but the other thing that you need to consider too is the fact that uh, th these tiles are also um, not going to look like I'm referring to ceramic here. They're not going to look like natural stone uh, as much as a porcelain tile might. So if you're trying to mimic soapstone or travertine kind of effects in your home, Ceramic tiles cannot produce that kind of effect. So in this case, porcelain is the winner because they can kind of create that. You can you can print um, almost any kind of design um, on these porcelain tiles and it can be polished or matte. Um, ceramic tiles, if they're not glazed ceramic tiles, they're going to be prone to water absorption. The clay is on these tiles really protected from water. So if you ever see ceramic tiles in the shower, it's because it's it's glazed. Otherwise, it be you might have to seal them uh, and they're just not maybe very suitable for that kind of environment. Porcelain, matte or polished, they're engineered to be to have a very low water absorption to be impermeable to water and the actual specifications on that is um, zero point less than 0 0.5 percent water absorption and there's a whole method in which to test them but i won't go into it for now but um with just on the subject of cer um, ceramic tiles they're more categorized as being vitreous or um you know, as 0.5% to 3% water absorption. Um, and, uh, or they, some of them can be even semi-virtuous, 3 to 7% water absorption. Again, much higher percentages, which is why they're not suitable for outdoors, because if moisture get inside in between 
the tiles and get inside the tile, those tiles are going to crack through expansion contraction forces. So if it gets too hot or it gets too cold, those tiles are going to fail. Whereas porcelain, um, especially the ones that are rated for freestyle environments, they're going to be much more suitable. So aside from the you know the, the the design aspect of the way they look, the water absorption, the, um, the, the size differences that you tend to see. You know, just another note that ceramic tiles don't come in those large sizes that you see porcelain tiles in. They tend to be smaller. And they'd be more suitable in creating an artistic effect in this particular space. So for instance, you want to create like herringbone patterns, or if you want to create subway look or any kind of look ceramic tiles are going to be much more suited for that kind of thing porcelain tiles because of the print that's on it you can create natural stone effects you can create seamless looks concrete looks uh so different different products different kind of looks that you're going to get the other difference you know is their uh edges Many porcelain tiles nowadays are rectified, which means that the factory has cut the sides of the tile and has made sure that the differences, the nominal differences between each tile within that container is very, very small. So that when you place the tiles beside each other, all the joint sizes are going to be even. All the tiles are going to be uh, equal in, in size. And so you won't have uneven grout joints. Um, ceramic tiles are not rectified. Uh, so as a result, they might, have, they might have slightly more variation in size between one tile and another. So as a result, the joint sizes that you, one might use to install these tiles are going to be bigger joints. Um, so you might be looking around one eighth, perhaps. Um, and the also other thing is that ceramic tiles tend to be a bit micro beveled because they're not they're not uh, rectified. They're going to be micro beveled, and that micro bevel also adds to the size of the grout joint because those tiles that sit beside each other are not going to be sitting so tight to each other. So that's another um, factor that really goes into it that you want want to consider when you are selecting your tile. Um, another subject of importance, which what goes back to what I what we said right at the beginning, was people will say ceramic tiles are, are for walls, porcelain tiles can be for walls and floors. This is true, and uh, and this is as per ASTM. C648 is a documentation that basically looks at the breakage strength of different um, um, ceramic tiles versus like porcelain tiles. And what they found is that ceramic tiles tend to have a breakage strength about 125 pounds versus, so a point load of 125 pounds versus a porcelain tile is going to be 250 pounds, about double. So if you think about a person, it would be, you know, weighing anywhere between 150 to 200 pounds. That's already going way above the breakage strength of these tiles. So that's the reason ceramic tiles are not installed on the floors is because they just don't have the breakage strength to be able to um, handle foot traffic. Whereas post and tiles, they do. And... Um, you know, many uh, even porcelain tiles, although they might have the uh, necessary uh, breakage strength to handle foot traffic, they're also categorized based on their level of foot traffic. And, um, you know, many times the tile label will have a particular uh, recommendation. So, for instance, they're classified from class zero to five. So, Class zero tends to be like, um, you know, 
not at all recommended for floors. So this is for walls only from various reasons. Class one would be like light traffic. Class two would be medium to light traffic. So these are more residential locations. Class three would be like medium to heavy. So now we're getting to commercial like office buildings, schools. These are the kind of tiles that are used there. And then we have class four, heavy traffic and class five, also heavy traffic. So we're going to get into places like airports and um, factories where a lot of heavy equipment might be driving over those tiles. So um, they're also going to be rated as well. Um, but I think when we think about design, you want to consider if, are you trying to create a, a particular pattern with the tiles or are you trying to follow a seamless look or to follow the print that's on the tile and really emphasize that if you're doing that then the obvious way to go is the porcelain tiles and now these tiles are getting bigger so we can create less joints and really emphasize those patterns if you're trying to create a pattern then the way to go is ceramic tiles because their colors are vivid their sizes are appropriate for the kind of patterns you want to create. And there's just so much variety of them. And you can get all kinds of shapes and, you know, things like ripple effects on them, which can look really nice. And so that's sort of what I wanted to discuss with you in this episode. Thank you for listening. And I will see you in the next episode.